Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mel and I am the owner and maker of Made by Manny and Mel. In today's video, we're going to be making a really kind of moody and elegant, very simple striped tumbler. We are taking it back to the basics with this one, so I really hope that you enjoy it. If you like the video, make sure you give it a big old thumbs up. And if you are not already subscribed to our channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below as well. All the products I'm using in this video will be linked down below, as well as links to all of my favorite products with some discount codes too. All of my social media accounts are linked down there as well, so be sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, join our Facebook group. And if you're interested in getting more exclusive content and perks, you can check out our Patreon group, which is, you guessed it, linked down below. <laughs> I hope that you guys enjoy the video and I think that's it. Let's go. We are using a 30 ounce skinny straight from Craft Haven for this stripe design. So I'm gonna start by prepping my cup. I'm using a 60 grit sanding block and just roughing up the surface and then wiping it down with rubbing alcohol and we'll be ready to get going. So I'm going to first measure my cup from top to bottom. We're gonna be creating a template for our stripes to make sure that they're all the same size. Um, so this is what we're doing first. We're gonna measure it. It's about 9.3 inches tall. And then I'm going to measure around the cup and that's about 10 inches. So each stripe needs to be 10 inches long so it'll make it the full way around the cup. I wanna do five stripes. So we're going to take those measurements and then plug them into Silhouette Studio and I'll show you how I create this template. Okay, so we're in Silhouette Studio and putting this template together is really, really easy. So what we're going to do is start with a big shape that we're going to make the size of a full wrap for our cup. So I'm going to put in the dimensions that we measured. Our cup is 10 inches wide and then we measured about 9.3125 inches tall. So I'm going to plug those dimensions in and then it's going to make a shape that's going to fit a full wrap of our tumbler. Then what I'm going to do is just create another shape that's going to be the size of our stripe. So I took 9.3125, which is the height of our cup, and divided it by five, which is the number of stripes that I wanna have. That came out to be 1.86. So my stripes are each going to be 1.86 inches tall by 10 inches around. So I'm going to create this shape repeat it five times so I have five stripes and I'm just going to line them up on that background to make sure that they fit and that I have them spaced out properly. Um, so if you had more than five stripes or you wanted to do less, you would just take the height of your tumbler, divide it by the number of stripes you wanna have and then that will tell you the size of each stripe. You'll keep the width the same, obviously, you still want it to go all the way around the cup. So once I had my five shapes, I made sure that they were aligned all to the center and then I distributed them evenly so that we have everything perfectly lined up they're all spaced out correctly and they're all going to fit on our tumbler once we've got that all done I'm going to get rid of that shape I highlighted them all to make sure that that added up to about that 9.31 um, if you get this a little bit off it's okay we're gonna remove all of this anyway so don't worry about making it too perfect but you do want all of your shapes or your stripes to be the same size. So once I had that ready, I grouped all of my stripes together, got rid of that background vinyl piece, and then cut this out on my silhouette using my stencil vinyl. Okay, so here's our template all cut out. I used stencil vinyl. I love stencil vinyl, but if you don't like stencil vinyl, you can use removable. Whatever you're comfortable using is totally fine. So I'm gonna cut off all of this excess backing from here and make sure that we just have our stripes. And then I'm going to apply my transfer tape this doesn't have to be super perfect. We just want to get the stripes onto the cup. And these are big pieces, so they're pretty easy to work with. So what I'm doing is now after I've got my transfer tape on, I'm going to cut off all of the excess from the top so that I can use that to make sure that my stripes are placed accurately. And then I'm gonna wrap it around my cup and I'm basically just going to treat this like a vinyl wrap. So I'm going to anchor down one piece of my transfer tape and I'm gonna use a piece of old painter's tape, <laughs> reuse a piece of painter's tape to um, anchor it down just a little bit more to make sure that it's not going to move. And then I'm going to remove a little bit of that backing, cut off that 
little piece. So we've got about an inch to two inches of that stencil vinyl that we're going to lay down on the cup to make sure that our stripes are in place and that they're going to lay down correctly. So this is exactly how I would do a vinyl wrap, except the vinyl is sized to fit perfectly on the cup. We don't have any excess up at the top or bottom. So now that I've got it anchored down to the cup, I'm gonna wrap it around one more time just to make sure that everything is lined up and that we're good to go. And then I'm going to apply this the same way I would a vinyl wrap. I'm going to push the vinyl onto the cup and push the backing off in the process. You can also use your scraping tool. This makes it so much easier. And this doesn't have to be applied perfectly. Remember, this is just a stencil. We're going to remove all of this vinyl as we go. If you would prefer to use like painter's tape or you know, just do this manually without a stencil, you totally can. It's just a little bit more difficult to make sure that your stripes are exact. Plugging in the numbers to your cutting program, whether you use Cricut or Silhouette, make sure that your stripes are all the same color. So you can put the stencil together the exact same way if you have design space, it does not matter. You don't have to have a Silhouette. So now that I've got my template applied, I'm just taking a Sharpie and writing what my plan is for each stripe. And then I'm going to take off the stencil vinyl right away. So you don't even have to write what you're doing. Um, so for the top and the bottom stripes, I'm going to paint those like a really pretty emerald green. And then the middle is going to be a gold color. So I used metallic gold from Rust-Oleum and hunter green from Rust-Oleum as well. I let the paint dry about an hour and now I'm ready to go in with my glitter. I'm using Pond House from Peachy Olive Glitters for those dark green sections. And then I'm using Oh Holy Night from Chase Ray Creations for that middle gold section. And I'm using my favorite adhesive as of late, my Crystal Lac Glitter Glue. So I'm going to start with the gold section because it's the lighter of the two colors. And I just squirted a little bit of this glitter glue onto that section and I'm using a one and a half inch paintbrush to brush it on. You just wanna make sure that you have a very thin, even coat. And then I'm gonna go in with my glitter. This glitter is so beautiful. It's so, so pretty. Um, it was part of her mystery box for the holidays, but I think it's on her website now. I'm not sure though. Um, so I'm just gonna glitter that, tap off any excess, and then we will move on to the next section. So I'm doing the exact same thing. I'm just using a little tiny bit of glitter glue and spreading that evenly across each section. Just be mindful as you're glittering, you don't want to get any of that dark glitter into your lighter section. So I'm holding my cup horizontally to make sure that we don't get any contamination of colors. Once I've got this top stripe glittered, I'm going to repeat that exact same process on the bottom. And we are going to do the actual bottom of the cup. So make sure that you get a good even coat there and then just make sure you've got full coverage with your glitter. So here's what we've got with this. This glitter combo is so pretty. I'm going to remove those remaining two stencil sections right after we glitter, and then I'm going to just tap off any excess with my brush, and then set this aside and let it dry for at least two hours before I move on. After the two hours has passed, I'm going to go in again with my glitter glue and use it to seal my glitter. That's one thing I love about this is that it's so easy to use for both adhesive work and for sealing. Don't be afraid to use enough of this to make sure that you're not like dragging your glitter around um, and just make sure you don't have any clumping or too many spots where you've got glitter like clumping up. After I do the green sections, I'm going to wash my brush and then go in and do the gold section. Just make sure that you aren't, again, contaminating your colors in any way. Once I've got this all sealed up, I'm going to take a paper towel and wipe off that glitter glue that kind of got into those stainless steel sections. It's not a huge deal if you leave it. I just wanted to kind of get that cleaned up a little bit. I'm going to let that dry for at least another two hours and then it will be all sealed and ready for the next step. This glitter glue when it dries will have a little bit of a tacky finish. So if your two hours passes and you kind of touch your glitter and it's tacky, that's totally fine. It is meant to do that. So I'm going to take this painter's tape that I got on Amazon and I'm going to use it to just tape off my glittered sections so that we can spray paint those two middle sections. You can use any kind of painter's tape or tape that you'd like. This tape is just really cheap and it works well. So I painted those two middle stripes with flat white paint from Rust-Oleum, let it dry about an hour, and now I'm ready to glitter those two sections. For the adhesive on this one, I decided to tint it a little bit. 
it didn't really work that well, but I'm going to show you what I did anyway. I'm using cotton white mica powder from Arteza, and I just put a little spoonful of that in a medicine cup, and I'm going to add some of that glitter glue to that cup and mix it up. I wanted to do this because my spray painting job was not the best, so I wanted to give a little bit more coverage in the these white sections. I'm not sure if it helped at all, but anyway... I tinted the glitter glue with that mica powder and you just want to make sure that if you're going to do this you make sure you don't have any clumps of that mica remaining when you mix your glitter up. So then I use that same one and a half inch brush to apply the glitter glue to those white sections and I'm taking extra fine firefly from PDB and I'm going to cover both of those stripes with this glitter. Firefly is literally it it deserves the hype it gets for real. <laughs> Once I'm done glittering, I'm going to tap off any excess and then I'm going to remove my tape. So we're going to remove all of that tape and then I'm going to let this sit aside and dry. You guessed it, for another two hours. That's the only thing with this glitter glue. You do have to let it dry the full time um, in between all of these steps, but it's so easy. You don't have to mix epoxy or anything. It's just like, it's so easy. So once the two hours had passed, I was ready to apply my leopard spots. I'm going to hand paint these. So I'm going to tint my glitter glue again. So I squirted a little bit of that into a clean medicine cup and I'm taking black pearl pigment powder from PDB and I put that into the same cup and I'm mixing it together. I'm not looking for like a true black finish here. I'm more so just tinting this glitter glue so that when I paint my leopard spots on the white glitter, I can see what I'm doing. I did add a tiny little bit of black acrylic paint from Arteza just to deepen up the color a tiny bit. Um, and this is what we ended up with. So it's kind of like a gray gunmetal color, but it worked out perfectly. So I'm ready to glitter now. And one thing that I have learned lately is that when you're doing your leopard spots, if you use a cut of glitter that is smaller than the cut of glitter you're going to use for your spots you're not going to have an issue with your glitter like getting stuck in your base color if that makes sense so for example for my base i used extra fine firefly which is a 0.008 cut and for my leopard spots i'm going to use midnight from pdb which is just a regular fine so it's a 0.015 so my leopard's glitter, leopard spot glitter is bigger than my base glitter, which is going to help me with that contamination that you sometimes get when you're doing leopard spots like this. Just a tip, it's really helped me in doing this. <laughs> so I'm taking a little cheap paintbrush that I got in a huge pack on Amazon, and I'm just going to freehand these leopard spots onto this white stripe area. It is helpful if you have a reference for whatever you're painting. I did not. I just kind of did it from memory, <laughs> um, but it is helpful if you have something to look at to give you some ideas for like what shapes to paint. So every few shapes or spots, I'm going to go in with my glitter and glitter them. And as you can see, I have barely any contamination of my white, like black glitter getting into that white. So I'm just going to continue on painting every, you know, three to five stripes, I'll go in and apply my glitter. This stuff doesn't dry super fast, so you could probably do a lot more stripes. I just was excited to see what all of them looked like when I glittered them, and I just wanted to glitter them. So once I was done with this bottom stripe, I went in and I did the exact same thing on that top stripe. Once I had all of my leopard spots glittered, I tapped off any excess and then took a clean paintbrush and just brushed off any of that black glitter that might have gotten into my gold section. There wasn't that much, but I just brushed it off. Then you need to let this dry at least two hours. I left mine overnight and then I sealed it with three coats of clear gloss spray from Rust-Oleum. 
Once all of my sealant was dry, I went in with two coats of epoxy. This first one was about 40 milliliters, and I was really making sure to just kind of glide the epoxy on. I didn't want to rub the glitter too hard to make it move around, um, so just be careful as you do that. And then after this coat cured about six hours, I went in with a second coat. The second coat was about 25 to 30 milliliters. You wanna be really careful on this first coat sorry to go back, when you are doing your leopard spots. I don't think that I sealed these perfectly. We did have a little bit of that black glitter move into the white. It's not too, too bad, but I would just be really, really careful. In hindsight, I probably would have used a different sealer, maybe that glitter glue. Um, but after that one, that second coat cured, I went in and sanded down my rim. And as you can see, like just these little tiny, very, very minimal pieces of black glitter. The cup is still beautiful, but I wish I could go back and seal this a little better. So now the next step is to add our striping in between our stripes. And I'm using Tech Wrap Craft Champagne Gold like textured metallic vinyl. It's so beautiful. It's the perfect gold color. It's not too yellow. I just love it. I'm just going to place these in between each of our glitter stripes. I cut these at 11 and a half inches long by 0.15 inches wide. And what I'm doing is attaching the stripe to the cup and then I'm rolling the cup on my table to make sure that my cup stays level and I'm just holding the stripe straight in the same position to make sure that we don't get a wobbly line in between our stripes. Once I had all my striping added, I went right into my final coats of epoxy. I did two final coats and each one was about 25 milliliters. Once the final coat was all cured, we were all done. So that is it for this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. If you recreate this design, be sure to tag me in your photos at made by Manny and Mal. Don't forget to check out all the information down in the description box. All of the supplies I used in this video will be listed down there, as well as links to all of our social media. So make sure that you're following us on Instagram and that you have joined our Facebook group. Okay, I love you guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.